straight on the yoga mat. Make sure your legs are comfortable. And namaste everyone. Good morning. So this, uh, today is month end May and June is a very special month because June 21st, I think it's summer solstice and also June 21st, 2015 was announced by United Nations as International Yoga Day. And that was kind of a turning point in my life as well because I was doing yoga for many, many years since my teenage years. But I had kind of stopped doing or dwindled my practice because of my kids being young and getting busy in the practice. But when that was announced, it was like a reminder to me that, oh my God, the whole world is doing yoga. Why I don't do it when I know it's the solution for all the problems. So from that day, I started doing it every day and never stopped. <laughs> so that was kind of turning point. So the purpose of yoga, I'll just take a minute to make you understand so that you understand the depth of yoga. So yoga is not an exercise per se. It's however famous as the exercise. And the exercise part is only the one eighth part of the entire knowledge of yoga. And the purpose of yoga is to make you emotionally mature. So one of my teachers used to say that yoga is not for twisting your body, it's for straightening your mind. So that is the purpose of yoga because it works on the mind also. It's a body-mind connection. It makes you emotionally mature. And when you become emotionally mature, you're able to deal with everything around you, your relationships, your work, your stress. <clears throat> you have the ability to deal with everything in a mature manner. And the ultimate goal of yoga is <clears throat> to discover our true nature, what is ourselves. So because only when we know, it's a manual to live life, to know yourself, because only if we know ourselves, we can know others and work accordingly, right? So today's uh, meditation session at the beginning will involve a lot of self-reflection. And so the format of the class is we'll have mindful meditation for five minutes. Then we'll have pranayam, which is the breath work. And then we'll have the hatha yoga portion. And we have puja for hatha yoga portion, like that is the postures. And at the end, we do something called <clears throat> yoga nidra. Yoga nidra is a very powerful, deep relaxation technique, as well as developing a self-awareness within. And it might take you very deep into self-reflection. So that's a caution okay but always bring it back to yourself to your breath whenever you feel like um, you're getting emotionally disturbed or something and it's just I do that once a month so that we really go deep into our own self and that's what the journey of yoga teaches us all right so with that in mind uh, let's begin with three ohm so put your hand in dhyan mudra or simply palm facing up on your lap and we'll just uh, begin with three ohm. Take a deep breath. Oh. Oh. Just observe your posture with your closed eyes, how you're sitting. Feel the weight of your body on your mat. Feel the weight of your hands on your legs. Observe your legs, they should be comfortable, no tight clothing. Feel the touch of your clothes on your legs and arms. Observe your spine, it should be straight, erect. That enhances our awareness. Observe your neck. Make sure the neck is in a neutral position with chin parallel to the floor. 
observe your jaw it should not be clenched and your tongue should be very lightly touching the upper palate just behind the upper set of teeth that's the normal resting position of the tongue whenever we are stressed out or anxious we hold our tongue very tight so be mindful of that position of the tongue make sure your eyes are gently closed lips barely touching each other and focus on your inflow and outflow of the air from your nostrils Make sure we do the normal diaphragmatic breathing, which is when you breathe out, tummy goes in. When you breathe in, the tummy goes out. Observe the movement of your tummy so that it sinks with your breath in and breath out. Now feel the temperature of your in-breath and out-breath. The cool in-breath brings all the fresh prana, which is the energy into our body. The warm out-breath removes all the toxins from our body. Now set your intention for your practice or coming to this class today. What is your goal? What do you want to achieve? Any short term or long term goal that comes to your mind? Just repeat that mentally three times. This is a promise given to yourself, a promise to your breath that never fails in the seat of meditation. Take a deep in-breath and a deep out-breath. And let's begin a journey where we transport ourselves 10 years back from where we are today. Observe yourself a decade before how you were, what position in life you were, what were your priorities, did you do any mistakes in life? And are you fostering that guilt still? Our emotional growth doesn't happen if we keep fostering any guilt. And the guilt, carrying that guilt doesn't make you mature or successful or a better person. So if you're carrying any guilt, just let it go just tell yourself i have learned from that situation and now i'll move on i learned from my mistakes and i grow and that's how i become a better person and no one is perfect like you have made mistakes Others have also made mistakes who are around you and maybe they have hurt you in that process. But they have also made mistake and probably they have also realized 
just not been able to tell you and if you're holding any resentment because of somebody else in your life today is the time to let it go because human mind is a flowing river it always changes people act according to their mind and intellect at that given point of time but they aren't the same today so think about a person usually people close to us our family members spouse brother sister brother-in-law sister-in-law parents aunts anyone who has hurt you cousins and how you feel they have hurt you because you still carry the resentment when you think about that person you don't feel so good about it that's how you self reflect and try to forgive that person because at times we are all immature we sometimes say things we are not supposed to say and past is past people who dwell in the past cannot have a nice future now think about some decisions that you made a decade back that has impacted your life today has it positively impacted your life or negatively impacted your life now because of your decisions in the past has your life and your preferences shaped up as of today come back to today and see how your priorities have shifted has self care become a priority to you has mindfulness become a life for you take a deep breath in and a deep breath out again feel the temperature and the sensation of the air that's going in your nose whatever you do today creates a base for you for tomorrow that is inevitable so transport yourself now a decade from now in future and see what decisions that you make today will impact your future and how you want to shape your future give your age a number and look physically through your mental eyes how will you look at that age physically where will you be and who all will be with you and what will your priorities be 10 years from now what you value today will become your future 
So what do you want to inculcate in your life 10 years from now? Probably number your priorities, one, two, and three. It can be anything ranging from health, finances, relationships. Whatever your priorities you want to set in 10 years from now, and plant that seed, seed of that manifestation today. Now come back to the present moment and just reflect on what will you do or make choices as of today that will shape up your future. Again, you can Number things up, one, two, three. What choices will you make today that will manifest 10 years from now? And this is a slow journey. Things gradually change. Be mindful of that. And give yourself time Once you plant that thought, that seed in you today, it will for sure manifest. Even though you don't see the fruit right away, the seed will really work hard to germinate. The key to success is constant thought about it and also practice every day. Take a deep breath in and a deep breath out. You can gently open your eyes up and I'll teach you, since many people are new, so I'll teach you something called uh, single nostril breathing. So we'll breathe uh, alternately through single nostril. So use your right hand thumb, close your right nostril and we'll just breathe in through the left and breathe out through the left. For those who want to do the alternate nostril breathing, you can start. But for the new people, just do single nostril breathing. Especially feel the temperature and the sensation of the air that's going in the nostril. few more times, keep going. Now we'll block our left nostril with the middle two fingers of the right side and breathe in through the right. Again, feel the air entry and exit. Be very mindful of your breath. Keep going. Alternate nostril breathing balances the left and right side of the brain by alternately stimulating the left and right side. Okay, let your alternate nostril breathing go, finish off your cycle. And we'll do something called Brahmri Pranayam or B breath. So you use your thumb. You first listen, I'll demonstrate for those who do not know. For those who know, you can start doing it seven times, okay? So for the new people, you have to close the tragus of the ear. So you have to plug your ear. Three finger goes on your eyes and one on the forehead. We take a deep breath in and we take out the breath out while making a ma sound like we do in Om, but just ma part. And then we focus on here, a third eye chakra, we call it at the dark spot here. So I'll demonstrate once we take a deep breath. 
So we do it three times, three to seven times. For new people, we'll just do it three times today, okay? Let everybody finish. This is a very good breath work to just center yourself, relieve you from anxiety or if your mind is fuzzy, just do it for like three to five times. We'll come back to you, center yourself. 